everyone and welcome to what is my third review in as many days, or at least for me anyway at the time of recording. And I'm back with a review of X-Transbot's recent release Janssen, which is their masterpiece scaled Perceptor. Now this isn't a character that I was really ever intending to pick up uh, a version of. Um, my collection tends to be limited uh, to season one cast and m movie cast. And when I say movie cast I mean characters uh, new to the movie, not everyone who appeared in the movie. So I know this guy was in the movie, but he was introduced in season two, I think in um, War of the Dinobots part two, I believe. And um, yeah, just one of those characters that came out of nowhere with very little explanation, as did most characters in season two. Um, so yeah, I never really intended to get him, um, but I kind of rationalised it in that he is one of the characters that appears frequently in the movie. So whereas other th other characters like Blaster and that are in the beginning, uh, oh, in the in the opening scenes at Autobot City, they kind of fall by the wayside. Whereas Perceptor does join the core cast on on the trip uh, to um, Junkion and Cybertron, etc. So I've rationalised it that way. And the reason I've done that is because I really like the look of this guy, um, and I, I was kind of hoping that this would be a return to form for X Transbot, so I, I am hoping it will sort of restore my faith in the company. And it was only a hundred quid. Um, I say only, but you know, compared to uh, compared to a lot of figures at this scale, and indeed the fans toys offering their Tesla version two, uh, this was actually a very attractive price point. So that's why I ended up picking it up, um, and that's why I am bringing this review to you today. So let's start as always with a quick look at the packaging. Um, another. Nice uh, sort of bit of box artwork from XTB here, showing off the figure nicely on the front, or at least a, a rendering of the figure. It comes with their uh, the typical um, quote on the side. Um, what does that actually say? When scientifically investigating the natural world, the only thing worse than a blind believer is a seeing denier. Oh, there you go. How um, very profound. Uh, on the side there, obviously, we have the uh, the X-Transbots branding with um, X-Transbots 85, Scientist Janssen. Uh, and on the back, uh, I do like that they do these old, uh, sorry, these nods to the old G1 tech specs. Um, you get, uh, it's, it's a nice little throwback. Um, more companies should do this. And yeah, you get, uh, obviously, his function and his bio. Obviously not G1 toy accurate, but they always kind of, take the G1 bio as a basis and then uh, reword it so as not to get sued I guess. Uh, you can see that on screen, I'll leave that there so if you want to freeze frame it you can read it. But um, yeah that is everything really, I guess it probably makes sense to unbox everything and bring it back. It is quite a weighty package I will say that. So I'm going to get it all out. Uh, from what I've seen there's a huge amount in this set. That was one of the other things that attracted me for the money. It seems like a really good deal. So I'm going to get everything out, bring it back, uh, uh, bring it, sorry, bring it, uh, bring it in front of the camera and then we'll go through everything we get in the package. So just give me a few seconds. Okay and we're back with an unboxed Janssen here uh, along with all of his accessories uh, laid out. And he does come with a bewildering array of accessories, I have to say. There's, there's so much to go through, so much to digest here, just taking it out of the, pot, uh, of the packaging. I have, uh, as you can see, I have kind of um, given him one of his weapons already, just because that was, I think, I believe the G1 accurate weapon that he used in the cartoon, certainly on the character model from memory. Um, yeah, I... Wow, there's a lot, a lot included with this guy. Um, way more than you get with the average Masterpiece figure, even figures... Um, much larger figures at a much higher price point, I will say. So, um, some of it I'll probably never use. In fact, I would imagine the majority of it, but some of it is really great and does actually add a lot of uh, additional value to it. So, anyway, let's go through everything we get in the set. And I'll, I'll do what I always forget to do first off. I will actually take a look at the, the manuals and um, the collector card. So, here we go. We have the collector card. Now, the printing on this one is actually quite. Um, 
drab. Uh, it's, it's quite desaturated, so it doesn't look very red or blue on here um, compared to the figure or to the artwork, uh, you know, on the front of the box, etc. So it's all right, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not the best the best I've seen. Um, on the back, slightly better. There you go. I'll hold it up to the camera so that you can get a look at the specs and the bio. Um, obviously, just uh, mirroring what's on the back of the box anyway in a slightly more compact form. Uh, let's get that out of the way. Uh, we obviously have a manual, which uh, is, I don't know, is it full colour? No, it's not, but uh, it has some nice product shots, shows you everything that's included. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? Transformation guide as well as all the weapons guides. It does look like there are a lot of weapons. Uh, what else have we got in here? Yeah, just a, 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 a sort of a product shot around there. Um, and then the transformation instructions in black and white and then oh, some coming soon stuff at the back. Uh, there is an addendum as well. Um, I think I saw this on online on their, their Facebook group. Um, they've missed a few bits out so they included this addendum online and also in the packaging as well which is good. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's everything you would hopefully need to transform him, although I'm almost certainly going to use MGO's review because he is easily the best guy out there when it comes to doing transformation reviews uh, and reviews in general, I have to say. Um, this is, uh, I think they included this with the last release I had from them, their Lock V2 maybe, which is a, a product uh, catalogue of upcoming releases, uh, which is actually what sold me on this guy um, when I saw these pictures here. Um, what have we got? We have some stuff I'm not at all interested in. Um, I mean, I quite like the look of their uh, their Frank. Is it Frank they're calling it, I believe? Um, but uh, I don't know. I've already got that statue, the Blue Lobster statue, which I think is more tune accurate in its look and proportions. But obviously it's, it's basically just a PVC statue almost. So I don't know if I'll go in on this. But I do like the look of it. It just depends how it's priced. Um, if it's around the same sort of price point as this, which you'd assume it would be for a non-transforming figure, if not slightly less actually, um, even though it's quite big, um, I might go in on it. Um, not really interested in Quintessons. Uh, their judge uh, was well overpriced and I hated the, the, the fact they put all those electronic gimmicks in it just to jump the price up anyway. So not interested in those. Um, what else we got? Deathsaurus, not really bothered about. Not really bothered about uh, Punch and Counter Punch either. They were at the, the what they only appeared in a, one episode, I believe, of the G1 tune, and I wasn't at all, um, you know, uh, fond of them. I didn't have any affinity for them, so not really bothered. Oh, Virtus, will we ever actually get you? I paid for you six months or more ago now, and still haven't got it. Still irks me that they've put the yellow on both sides. He should only have yellow on the front and green on the back. I don't think that actually is required. You look at the vehicle mode here. I don't think it should be yellow on both sides but anyway who knows it, it might they might have done it out of necessity but i don't think so um but other than that he's looking really good and also comes with a lot of stuff um and at the back here uh we have their abaddon their galvatron again loving everything about this apart from maybe the size of the particle cannon um they don't have their magnus in here as well but from what i've seen that uh, that looks okay some dodgy product shots um from that uh that toy fair it was shown off at um, or wherever it was, that con it was shown at, uh, where they'd mistransformed it, made it look like a, a, even more of a gorilla than um, than uh, MP10. But uh, I think it actually does look much better than MP22 all over, and this looks better than Sovereign um, to my eyes. Uh, maybe not colour, but uh, I do love the look of it. So we'll see. Anyway, that's that's a year off almost. Right, so that's everything you get in terms of manuals. Uh, let's actually start on the real meat of the stuff now. Um, obviously, there is Jansen himself, looking pretty sweet. We, I've already taken one of the guns out, as I said. They, the guns come on these, these little uh, holders. Um, I'll bring them in here. And yeah, you have a, a wide variety of options here from sort of G1 um, to uh, toy um, and tune. So let's try and take some of them off. Um, I want to do it without breaking them, <laughs> obviously. Oops, I've already knocked one of, the, one of the other things over. And then let's take this off. Um, so yeah, this is, I believe, maybe the G1 tune. Oh, this, only has, this obviously has an orientation. It has to go in to fit correctly, and I haven't found it yet. Which way around does that have to go then? Right, there we go. 
Okay, so this I believe is spring loaded and will fire. It will, with some force actually. Um, hey, this takes me back to the 80s, back before we had actual safety standards and we were allowed to fire things at directly into our eyeballs. Um, yeah, not bad. That's actually got some power behind it, so I quite like that one. Although again, probably not a weapon I'll load them up with because it's it's very toy um, rather than tune. And here we have, I'm guessing this, I'll take this bit out first and then take this bit out. And I'm guessing, what is this? Is this tune or toy? I don't know. Um, I'm guessing toy. That's quite a loose fit. That that goes in. There's a there's a, a shaped piece that will only go in in one orientation, but that's really loose. That that feels like it should be thicker than that. I mean, it's not coming out, so fair enough. But it's a bit wobbly, um, which is a bit annoying. Um, will it take this as well? I don't know. No, it will not. So okay, that is not designed to go in there. Um, I should probably look at the instructions, really, shouldn't I? That they they do detail this in the instructions. But if you want a rifle option for him, there you go, you have a rifle option. And yeah, it looks pretty nice. Uh, again, I'm not really a fan of the fact that it's so loose, that that's not great. Um, but yeah, I suppose I'm really only gonna d display him with um, the, uh, the pistol option anyway, because that is his G1 option. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, but yeah, it's... It is a bit disappointing, I guess. Um, I suppose you could always have that separated, but that looks a bit naff, doesn't it? Anyway, let's put that to one side. That's enough talking about that. And then you have this effects piece, which comes on its own little uh, stand. Come on, will you, will you come off of this? Yes, you will, albeit very tight. Uh, and this, I think, is for this gun. Yeah, it just pops over the end there. And so you have a blast effect, which is nice. I like that, that, that actually looks pretty sweet. Turn him around this way, it's pretty good. Um, what else do we get? Uh, you get some really nice stuff with this actually. I, I have to say, I'm really impressed with the uh, the accessories. Um, and that's before we've even got to the figure, so hopefully the figure lives up to it. We get um, a, little, uh, a little funnel here, which is nice. Um, and a beaker as well. Obviously we know Perceptor was the, the scientist of the group, so he was always... Uh, tinkering around with stuff and you also get a test tube as well uh, now all of these can tab into his uh, hands I guess they're masterpiece style hands so they all have that little tab to go into the notch in the hands so you could uh, yeah have him uh, holding the test tube pouring that into here uh, and then distilling into the beaker I guess below so yeah that's pretty that's pretty sweet I like that um, I'll put those to one side we have some cartoon heads. Now they've given entire replacement heads here. Uh, I'm not an IDW fan, although I'm sure I probably should read it because I hear it's actually quite good. Um, albeit, you know, I'm so G1 centric that I'd probably get annoyed that it was different. I mean, they look okay, don't they? Um, I mean, this is this this is very Star Trek Borg uh, sort of to me. Anyway, it's very reminiscent of that. Um, I'm guessing maybe that was an intentional move by IDW's part in the comic, um, but yeah, I quite like the uh, quite like those. I'll never use them. I'll be honest. Uh, it looks like they just slide on and off of the mushroom peg. So I'll put those back over there. Uh, let's have a look. In terms of uh, his face sculpt itself, I mean, I'm assuming you can get a pretty good look at what's on there at the moment. Um, but it's a very neutral expression. But let's have a look at what else we get. We've got a nice, I guess, sad, sort of worried face there. That's really cool. I like that one. Um, we have, this is a very perceptor looking face sculpt to me. The little smile that he has, and that's very reminiscent of uh, the movie and, and other things. I like that one. That will probably be my go-to face for him when I get him on my shelf. Uh, here we have a little uh, talking face by the look of it, sort of pursed lips talking face. Uh, that looks good. What else? Oh, here we have a um, run blaster save yourself face. I think that's fair to say that's what that is. Uh, I really like that actually. That's a really good face sculpt. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have it for one on display because he'd look a bit weird just looking that upset 
in isolation, but it is a really nice face sculpt uh, that would look good if you were using it to replicate that scene in the movie. And then we have a slightly downturned mouth, which again, I'm not quite sure what use I'd have for that, but yeah, it looks okay as far as these things go. That's probably the weakest of the sculpts, but I still like it. Um, so yeah, good face sculpts all around, really. I had a couple of them really stand out as well. Uh, and now we're getting on to what I think are like the, the coolest accessories. And first up we have this little miniature perceptor in microscope mode, which I think is really, really cool. Um, this is obviously um, based off of the episode Microbots, when he, uh, Braun and Bumblebee, shrunk down to go inside of Megatron. Um, so that's pretty cool that they've included a miniature perceptor. But that pales uh, by comparison to the other things they've uh, included here for coolness. Um, I'll move them back a bit so you can sort of see the scale of them next to, next to uh, Jansen himself. These are the microbots, and these guys are fantastic. Um, now, admittedly, slightly out of scale with each other, um, you know, relative. Uh, Bumblebee and Brawn aren't too bad, but Perceptor should be significantly taller than Brawn. Um, but, you know, I don't really remember the relative scale in the episode. They may not have shrunk down entirely proportionally. But anyway, who cares? They look great. And what I really love about them is that they are really G1 toy accurate, because uh, sorry, toon accurate, um, because they are obviously just, um, they don't have to transform, so they can be a lot more accurate. But they are, <laughs> they've got so much articulation for their size. I mean, B looks ridiculous because his little eyes there, they're, they're not very well painted, but what do you do um, with something that small? Um, it's difficult, isn't it, to, to actually give it any kind of life. They've just done a couple of dots. Um, but, uh, you know, the arms, they're on ball joints. They're kind of loose, but you, know, you can do a 360 on that. The head is on a ball joint, so that wiggles and moves. Um, you've got bicep uh bicep curl there or bicep articulation which is you know 90 degrees which is uh, that's as, that's as good as I got on my latest fans toys figure let's face it um it's got a waist rotation for god's sake in a figure of this size um you know the ball jointed legs you can you can get all the way up here you've got knee bend you've even got ball joints for the feet you know so you can actually get like a wide pose on him um that is crazy i i, I mean they are quite loose, and I don't know how durable they're going to be, but I'm not really going to play around with them a lot. I've got a little bit of paint transfer on there, which is annoying. Um, so the yellow's got a bit of a, a blemish on it. But that's that's just fantastic. I love the look of that. Um, and then they just get better as they get bigger. Like, Braun's even better. I think Braun... Oh, Braun's... Yeah, Braun's fairly loose, actually. Um, but that's that looks better than Fans Toys Hunk as, a, as an accurate representation of the character model. That is superb. Um, and again, like, he's got an articulated head that can look left and right. He's got ball joints, so his arms, and, can, and he's got the same movement. Um, has he got a waist swivel as well? Um, I don't think Braun has got a waist. Oh, no, Braun has got a waist swivel as well, unbelievably. Look at that. He's got a little waist swivel. And again, the same articulation. Um, and arguably, again, no, not arguably, uh, definitively more ankle tilt than the fans' toys version. Um, so there you go. Uh, I know they don't have to transform. Oh, there we go. Off the ball joint. This this does feel a bit loose. Uh, this one might have to have a bit of floor polish on the ball joint, actually. Um, this this is the one that feels a lot looser than B. Um, but, you know, for what they are, they are pretty... They look pretty damn good. I'm, I'm really, really impressed with how nice these minifigures look. Um, I'm just going to pop him back and then I'll get Percept out himself. Oh, Braun is not wanting to stand up as well. He does have the very loose joints compared to Bumblebee though. Um, and potentially Perceptor feels like he's not as loose either from, a foot, from taking him out of the box. No, he's slightly sturdier as well. But again, the same articulation. This, um, Even this, uh, this piece here articulates. That is actually a separate piece that you pop onto a ball joint at the top. Um, but then that articulates, um, and yeah, that is fantastic, isn't it? I love the look of these guys. Oh, I'm quite taken with it. Maybe this is, I could save myself a fortune if I just collected in this scale, couldn't I? Um, <laughs> yeah, great, I love this. I love all of these extra bits. Um, they look really, really good. Uh, yeah, and add, you know, for 100 quid, you get so much with him, and it adds a lot of play value. Like, I, I you could recreate, numerous scenes couldn't you from the tune um you know i could put these with my megatron to to sort of have them 
you know recreate that scene um it, there's just a lot of stuff you can do it adds a lot of play value um or, or at least posing value anyway um that's probably enough about all the accessories i've gone on for ages about these but honestly for once it's worth it because there are a lot um, i'm gonna get those out of the way just tidy up a little bit and then we'll come back with a look at uh, jansen himself we'll go through articulation etc and see how we get on with that okay so just give me a second and i will be right back okay so i'm back with a look at jansen himself now um, one thing I did want to do, I've actually taken the opportunity to swap his face over. I really like the smiling face, so that's uh, that's now on him. So it's going to give you a slightly closer up look at his neutral face and hope that this actually f uh, does focus for you. There you go, that's his neutral face, which you may not have been able to see from the distance before. Um, still pretty nice face sculpt, but uh, yeah, uh, I like the laughing face for the moment. Um, oh, sorry, smiling face. Anyway... Right, let's uh, let's have a quicker, or oh, sorry, closer look at this guy because he is um, really good. Um, I'm really liking him. I mean, that is not perfect, but it's pretty damn close to the character model. Um, looking at it um, up close uh, for the first time, really paying attention to it, um, there are a few things that are inaccurate to the character model. Uh, the head, I believe, is probably a little bit too narrow. It should be a little bit um, wider. Um, and I think actually looking at Fans Toys Tesla version 2, they do have a more accurate head and potentially even face sculpt. But that isn't to say that this is bad by any stretch of the imagination. This actually, you know, again, it's character model wise, the Fans Toys is more accurate. But you could find any number of episodes where this is also accurate. And actually, um, the, uh, the Japanese Headmasters episode, uh, he, or episodes, he does have a head that looks more reminiscent of this than the, the Marvel G. Sorry, Marvel. The Sumbo. Uh, well, I guess it is Marvel because it's Marvel character models. Um, but yes, the, uh, the Sumbo stroke Marvel iterations of the characters. Um, now, I often think that x transbots does use the uh the headmaster series as the basis for its color schemes and designs and things because their scourge is uh, a lot closer to the headmaster's version of the character than to the movie character in terms of colors um but yeah i i really like uh oh that's the version one of their scourge i should say their um their version two is uh it's well it's not accurate to anything but uh, anyway this um yeah other than that i mean Again, all of these figures take liberties, don't they? They have to because they transform, unlike the little minifigs. But it's a really lovely looking figure. Uh, you know, the silver trim, you can make an argument that that should be more white. But then white, silver in the Transformers universe is always a constant argument. Um, in the movie and maybe even in the show, he had a white plate there at the front rather than red. But I actually think it looks probably better with it being red. And it probably needs to be red because of transformation, I would imagine. Um Feeling him in hand, he is a very chunky boy. There's a lot of die cast in him, and he is very, very solid feeling. Um, although it still has, you know, some of that X Transbots looseness to it, floppiness. The the tolerances aren't quite there. Um, things are still quite loose in terms of when I was standing him. He does feel like he might topple back fairly easily. Um, he doesn't have anything by way of heel spurs really to hold him. Um, and if you have the knee anything other than locked straight, he does tend to fall back a little bit. Um, that was what I found when I was trying to pose him for the camera anyway. Uh, out of the box, uh, what did I have to do really? Not a huge amount. Um, this I've seen complaints online about this not being very flush, this chest piece here. Now, I did find that that was the case on mine, but it's because if you press this piece in, that piece pops out a bit. Um, this piece is not designed to be completely flush and when you press that it will come out and you'll see there is a little bit of a gap there but it doesn't really show as much as this piece would um, also on the top here these tabs and that I find that they sometimes pop out when you move things uh, and this one here but when you push it all together it locks in nicely uh, or relatively nicely it does move a bit but again that is very uh, x trans um, this thing uh, I guess his, uh, his microscope attachment that locks on ish um, but not completely so it does have a tendency to pop up um, but it's not too bad and it stays in place unless you're really trying to move it um, it does unlatch from the, the little clip there but it doesn't 
come right the way up. So uh, if you're leaving it alone for the most part, it's fine. Um, I also find that like when it comes shipped, it comes shipped with this uh, this piece like that. Um, but I prefer to have it extended. It looks a bit better, makes it sort of more balanced. Um, he appears to be slightly thicker than the fans toys guy. Um, neither of them actually are as chunky or squat as the animation model. Um, but again, in practice, um, Perceptor was never really drawn in the series as the animation model looked. The animation model was very sort of stocky and top heavy, um, whereas he was a lot more um, svelte, um, although still quite chunky in the series. But uh, I really think this is evocative of, of the, the animation model. And I love this uh, this kind of uh, metallic cyan. It looks really, really nice. Or is it azure? I don't know what colour you would call it, but it's, it's really nice. Um, and I really like the um, the red as well. They, they complement each other really well. Um, it's a really visually pleasing figure to look at. So my first impressions, yeah, taken out of the box, are that it looks great. Um, and it looks good from every angle as well. I mean, there are panel lines, obviously, um, but nothing really, you know, terribly egregious. Um, I think some of the issues people have talked about with it um, have been these legs separating, um, like falling apart and stuff like uh, well, I've heard of breakages as well, but also that these legs, these leg pieces, you can see there's a join here, but that they just unclip at the drop of a hat. Well, you can see that's not the case on mine. So I don't know whether that's based on early test reviews or, or whatever, um, you know, uh, t test shots and reviews of those. But I can't really find any any fault out of the box. That's not to say that won't change. But all things considered, this is a, a quantum leap forward from uh, even the version two of Locke. This feels so much better in hand. The materials feel better. Um, it feels just a lot weightier. Um, and yeah, it just, it's just a more aesthetically pleasing figure as well, which is great. Uh, so I guess what to do now, probably let's do a quick articulation checklist because this is uh, this is going to be one for me as well. I haven't gone through any of this. So the head is on a mushroom peg, I believe. So you uh, you get a lot of, uh, of upwards um, tilt. Uh, it does expose the mushroom peg, which is annoying, but that you know that's not exclusive to this guy. Not a lot of downward movement, um, and you do get obviously 360 movement on the mushroom peg. It, it's weird actually; it seems to click in stages. Um, so you you have to if you want to get it in sort of like a finessed angle, you have to sort of move it very gradually to, and get it to stick. Um, and there, like that clicked then, but it's not facing completely central. So doing it there, in, where it's facing completely forward, it actually feels like I've got it wedged on a bump as it goes round, which is it's difficult to articulate what I mean. But, you know, if you do pick one up, you'll see what I mean, um, assuming this isn't exclusive to mine. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't really impact it at all, so it's fine. Uh, obviously, this micro microscope piece here, is articulated you can move it up and down and i've already demonstrated you can move it in and out with this uh this uh little switch here um this little dial here sorry uh the arms you have a good range of motion on those they will go all the way up to here um not even really impeded by the micros microscope attachment either because uh, although as you can see it's quite loose on this side when you move the arm um uh, that that piece does does it's better on the right than it is on the left uh, the left arm, nice soft ratchet all the way around, 360. You do also have a bicep swivel. It's it's a bit of a weird one in there. It's quite tight. Um, feels quite sort of feels almost like it might break a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, and yeah, it's all right. It, it's it's not the best I've ever ever felt, but it's not terrible. Um, what else do we have? We have. Um, an elbow bend, but it is only 90. It's not a double jointed elbow, just single jointed. But, you know, again, lots of figures like that, aren't there? So it seems to be a little bit um, uh, churlish to, to criticise XTB excessively for that. Uh, what do we have down here? On the hands, we have a 360 wrist rotation. Um, quite stiff, but it does rotate all the way around. You have a very weird... Um, articulation point here where it, it looks very strange um, but you know you can get the hand pushed all the way back like that if you wanted to but it does look a bit odd um, each of the fingers is uh, individually articulated which is good they are very stiff on my copy though which makes it uh, uh, sorry I, when I say each of the fingers I, I mean the index finger and the thumb are individually articulated um, the rest of the fingers are on um, you know the base pin 
um, but you do have individual articulation on the on the ones that matter, which are the um, <coughs> the index finger and the thumb. And the thumb is on a ball joint, which is good. Instantly elevates it over the masterpiece seekers in my mind. Um, they're not the most attractive hands in the world, but you know they get the job done. And you know he can point at you if you want him to do that. Um, what else do we have? We have a waist swivel, which you know you can go 360 on that if you want. He does have something that I didn't think he had, which is an ab crunch. Uh, I looked at the figure and I was like, well, it looks like it should have, but it doesn't. You know, I feel like I'm just going to snap everything when I do it. But he does have an ab crunch. It's just very tight. I, I might need to shave the tab in the way I did with my MP45 KO. But if you click it hard enough and you're brave, he does indeed have an ab crunch. And it's quite a deep ab crunch as well, as you can see. Um, he can look down a fair way, which is good. But um, yeah, there is a little tab, which you can probably see in there. A little tab right there. Um which I might see if I can get something in just to shave a tad off. Uh, it doesn't need to be as tight as it is, and it does feel excessively so, uh, like I might break it. Um, but I don't want to shave too much off, because then I don't want it to become loose. So uh, I probably won't utilise the ab crunch all that much, so I might leave well enough alone. Uh, on the legs, well, it's quite interesting. This They seem to try to replicate the, um, the MP45 uh, hip skirts here so when you move the legs up all the way to the front the hip skirts retract which is a nice little touch um, and he does go all the way up to 90 with the leg forward now they all they come back down as well which is good uh, some sometimes they don't on these figures uh, the rear hip skirts are just normal um, and again you have side skirts as well but you can get you can get a decent range of motion to the back as well um, the ratchets are reasonable um, not very many teeth on them, so they're not very well spaced, so you, you can only get quite um, large incremental jumps there. But, you know, it does the job. Um, the outward movement is on a soft, uh, it's, it's very soft, it's on, um, sorry, it's on friction joint, but it is quite soft. And that, that hip skirt there does impede it slightly, so you don't quite get um, 90, but you get enough. I mean, you know, he's not going to be doing the can-can, is he? Uh, or side kicking anyone hard um, and yeah again it holds the weight of what is quite a weighty foot because of the die cast in the feet um, what's the knee bend like we oh we have nice ratchets on the knees and they're a nice double jointed knee bend there um, oh, it doesn't actually hold all that well maybe it's not double no maybe it's not maybe it is only single um, but you know it does the job that goes as far back as you need it to really doesn't it and let's bring that back down and then for the feet you have some decent toe pivot there that looks good and you can go up uh, a little bit not much but that's because the foot's on a rocker so you you can go you can go up a little bit but not much at all because it's impeded by this bit here um but the heel moves as well um, he's not the most stable figure as i said but you know it is okay um and you also get quite a lot of ankle tilt but again it looks a bit silly because it breaks the sculpt but it's not bad um i think you know you probably get quite a lot of uh, poses out of this guy quite a few dynamic poses um which would be good uh, i look forward to sort of messing around with that and seeing what i can do with him um so yeah i think all things considered uh he has a decent range of motion um and he looks pretty good. Oh, hold on. There we go. Look, that's the separation people are talking about with the leg. So that does that does unclip a bit if you're messing around with it, but not if you're just, you know, if you're just sitting here or, stand, uh, you know, if you've got him standing there, he's not going to fall apart. You know, I've had to manipulate that quite a lot for the purposes of demonstrating the articulation, and it's only moved a small amount, hasn't it? So um, let's see if we can get him into slightly dynamic pose. Oh, I forgot to mention, obviously, he does have the, the, the usual thigh swivel, although not a huge amount. Um, but uh, let's see what we can do in terms of dynamic posing here. Uh, yeah, so you know, you can get him into some reasonable poses. Uh, again, this is a very, this is not the most dynamic pose I know, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how um, how wide his stance is and the range of motion he's got on his feet and that. And he looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I will say though is that these treads, um, I, when I took them out of the box, I was trying to push these in a bit more. They don't seem to want to go in any further than that, so you do still see a little bit of the tread folded up inside which is annoying but it's not the end of the world um and yeah like that is you know you could kind of imagine him there he goes 
looking pretty sweet there, I think. You, know, you put the effects part on that as well, if I can find it. What did I do with it? See, he did fall back a bit then. Put the effects part on. You, you, he stands fine as long as you kind of weight him forward, but obviously, you know, he is quite back heavy with all the, the die cast in him and stuff. So, um, and the heel spurs aren't quite long enough at the back and they don't seem to fold out anymore. So that is, that is my only concern. He, he will fall over if you knock him. Um, but he seems kind of stable if you just leave him alone, which is fine. Um, I do have a couple of minor paint blemishes on mine, a little bit on that silver there, which is annoying. I always hate it when it's on the front of a figure. I can live with it if it's on the back or the side, but, um, well, the back mainly. But, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, he looks pretty good. Uh, hopefully, you know, that's given you a good look at the articulation. What I'm going to do now is take him off, get him transformed into uh, his alt mode. Uh, now, he does have two alt modes. He has his microscope mode and a tank mode. And I've heard that it can be a bit tricky to get them transformed into the latter. But I'm going to give it a go and hopefully I won't break it. This this is how some people have broken their figures. But as I said, I'm going to go to the master, MGO, and I'm going to use his review to transform it. So it will probably take me a while, but due to the, the magic of video editing, I will be back with you in no time at all with a look at the first of his alt modes. So just bear with me. OK, and we're back with a look at uh, the first alt mode, uh, which is obviously his microscope mode. I think it's fair to say that was probably the most arduous of the three transformations I've done on the figures I've received in the last week. Uh, lots of little, uh, I don't know, what's the best way of putting it? So the tolerances are, are very um, ex-trans bots, I think that's the best way of putting it. So there's lots of um, finicky tabs and, and bits that don't quite click together how you'd expect. Um, the legs especially when you're trying to get them into to, to tab in to finish off the microscope they're not quite there the tolerances are a little bit off I mean it holds together okay it's not terrible um, but yeah the legs aren't quite to get them into the tabs they're not they're not sort of entirely straight now you can see that that legs in further but if I didn't do that it wouldn't tab in um, I guess I could have done something wrong but it didn't feel like I did uh, it just feels like it, something's a little bit off. But but all things considered, it actually looks pretty good in alt mode. Um, you know, it's a microscope at the end of the day. It's 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 not an alt mode I'm ever likely to use. Uh, I'm probably more likely to uh, to actually uh, bring this little guy in and use that in play uh, or in, in sort of um, scenes than I am uh, anything else. But uh, I do like uh, the way it looks. It's a very nice looking uh, transformation. Looks very uh, reminiscent of the G1 tune which is good uh, give you a bit of a 360 if I can it does have a tendency to fall backwards because it is again very back heavy um, there are some tiny little stoppers that you pull out these little wheels on the bottom here but they're not great and um, they could have done with being a bit further back um, it, it doesn't even look too bad from the back as you can see it's still pretty uh, pretty tidy um, you know again this this thing pushes in here but it's not entirely flush on mine um, Again, th these legs, I can see why these are broken on some people because of the design. You have to pull them open and then bend them over on themselves on this thin hinge here. And that's that's potentially why people are getting breakage. Um, that thin hinge is all that's really holding those legs together there. Um, so that is slightly worrying. Uh, but I, I, I'm not going to use mine in alt mode very often, so I should be fine once I've got it back in bot mode. That shouldn't, you know, t touch uh, touch wood should be uh, less of an issue for me um, but yeah it's it's fine it moves on the wheels it looks okay as I say it falls back again just as I say that um, but yeah it looks nice the um, the uh, the microscope part itself is on this armature so you can position that however you want really uh, it looks nice again you have this feature where you can turn this dial to extend the microscope or retract it um, if I bring in I, I've got uh, uh, someone to help me out with this scene here um i think i called him mp45 earlier i could be wrong but here's my my ko mp44 um complete with his movie dead face and damage on uh, very loose um, arm as well uh why is that so loose um probably because it's a ko mp44 eh? um, but yeah that is very loose i don't remember it being that loose but anyway um this wasn't a particularly great ko uh but yeah i guess you know you could have him I haven't, got, I haven't got a bed obviously to lie him on but you know you can have your dead prime there and perceptor can can come over and you can replicate that scene in the movie where he uh 
appear you know it appears the wounds are fatal and all that kind of stuff so yeah it's a, it's a nice looking it's a nice looking piece oh, let's get this trash out of here because it really isn't a great player um, and hasn't held up well either so yeah it's a nice looking piece uh, it's a microscope at the end of the day there's not really much more to say about it so i'm going to i'm going to shut up talking um i'm going to get uh, um the tank mode uh, sorted and I'll be back with a look at that because that actually looks fairly interesting from what I've seen um, I just hope to get there without any breakage but uh, fingers crossed wish me luck I will be back as soon as possible okay and here we are back with the second alt mode the uh, the tank mode and yeah again that was a bit of a pain to get to um, again very X trans bots uh, everything feels just a little bit off and a little bit loose um, so the, the main issues I had were getting everything tabbed in. Um, there are a series of tabs under here that you need to tab into the legs there. They still don't feel very securely attached. Similarly with these treads, um, getting those done, oh, let's see, they're still very loose um, fitting. So it's not a very solid, it, it, it kind of slumps a little bit. You know, it's not as upright as it should be perhaps. The wheels don't really support it. These wheels are actually quite tough as well to get out. I do have a bit of paint scratching on there, which is obviously their heels, so that's understandable. Um, yeah, the other things that don't really tab in very well are that the actual microscope part here is supposed to tab in there, but it doesn't really. Um, it just pops out. Um, and it's that's this really is, the, is that whole kind of tolerances thing with with X trans bots and this figure um, that take the, sh the the ultimate shine off it. Not not it's not terrible, but uh, yeah, it's, it shows a lot more in alt mode than it does in bot mode. Um, these tabs here as well. Uh, sorry, sorry. These panels here. Uh, this end piece is actually tucked back behind this panel, um, and getting it out was an absolute nightmare. You, I had to put a screwdriver in it and pry it out, and every time I did it, it pushed this thing this panel here in thought they were going to snap um, I'll never be using this mode again it just isn't worth it, it doesn't look good enough I mean it's, it's, it's a curio it was used in a couple of episodes wasn't it um, and yeah I suppose it's kind of nice they've offered this third mode um, but really it's not great so I got this guy for robot mode that's how I'm going to use him um, I, oh I forgot to mention in the review he does actually have a viewfinder it doesn't really you know the lens doesn't obviously magnify anything really but uh it is it is glass or plastic or whatever it, it looks okay um yeah it's a curio it's interesting to see this uh I, I never um had the g1 perceptor toy so i don't really remember it uh, as having a tank mode uh, obviously i knew it was a microscope but i, I don't you know i only really saw it in the cartoon and then that was very infrequent so yeah I'll give you a, a complete look around it, it's it's okay um as far as alt modes go, weird, janky, seldom used alt modes. But yeah, nothing to write home about. So I don't think you'll be missing out if you get this guy and you don't really bother with this mode because uh, I don't think the effort's really worth it. Uh, anyway, at least you can see it. Uh, and I would, uh, as, as always, I would suggest watching MGO's reviews because he, he, he had a pre-production sample which actually seemed to hang together better than this. Um, even though... He kept reiterating that fans, to uh, sorry, X trans bots were going to increase, uh, improve the tolerances, but um, it seems to be the other way around. Uh, even things like this, you can see that that uh, fist has gone into that uh, forearm much better in terms of its compression than this one. So it's little things like that. This is why they still lag behind fans' toys in terms of um, uh, the whole, uh, you know, uh, fit and finish, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, but uh, I think they look really good in terms of design, x Transports figures, and they, they do have a ton of accessories. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is final thought stuff, isn't it? So anyway, I'm going to get him back into bot mode, and then we will come back uh, with the, the aforementioned final thoughts. So just bear with me. OK, and we're back into bot mode now for some final thoughts. And it actually wasn't the worst transformation back to bot mode. Uh, fairly intuitive uh, I was able to remember most of the steps to get him back. Didn't need to re uh, refer to a video review. Um, I had a couple of uh, minor issues where I did things out of order. So I was blocking things from flipping back up and stuff internally because he is quite complicated internally when you need to move um, all this armature for his uh, microscope um, and some of the other bits and pieces. Uh, but uh, by and large, um, fairly 
successful and easy transformation back to bot mode, uh, where he will now remain, I have to say. I, I can't see myself transforming him again. Um, he, he looks really great in bot mode. I, I don't really want to, to move it uh, into alt mode again. Um, a couple of things I will say, though, um, definitely has those uh, those is issues um, with tolerances. Uh, one thing I have noticed now that after transforming it, it does seem looser in some places. So one of the little tabs on the back here, the latches that's designed to keep him clipped together. Um, now, when I move him, that just falls straight out that side. It's very loose. Um, I might be able to put some polish in there just to, to tighten it up a bit. Uh, I can't see that it's actually, um, you know, there's nothing that's made it do that other than just the actual normal transformation. Uh, there's, there's no explanation that I can see. The other side, uh, which was very tight to begin with, doesn't have that issue. Um, that one, you, you undo it and you clip it back in and it stays there. So, um, yeah, it's a bit annoying that that side doesn't, but again, I'm not going to be shaking him that often. Once he's on the shelf, he'll be fine, I'm sure. Uh, other than that, not too many issues. Um, tabbing these thighs back together uh, takes a bit of, uh, of effort. You know, you want to make sure that they're actually pushed in solidly, um, but again, not terrible uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, I mean, it all tab tabs together nice and securely. Uh, I haven't compressed it down quite far enough by the look of it. Uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not bad. I think the ab crunch is maybe slightly looser now. Not a huge amount, but slightly. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a nice it's a nice figure. Um, I I do I do like it. I just think it's it's the usual X Transbot story. Like it looks great, but it's not quite there in terms of quality. Um, but it is a massive step up from uh, what we've had recently from them. Um, so I'm quite happy uh, for what I paid for it, for 100 quid, uh, with all the accessories you get. You've got a lot of display value with it. It looks really nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied and I, I'm happy to recommend it. I think if you're looking at how much Tesla costs, Tesla's an extra 40 quid minimum, I think, maybe even more. Um, and I don't think it really looks much better if any better than this in you know arguably this is more accurate in some areas as i said before i do think tesla has a like a marginally more accurate head sculpt and and you know slightly wider head sculpt but again you could find anything to support the contrary argument i'm sure uh, any number of scenes um yeah i uh, again uh, very aware that i go on at length uh, and and just uh, stream of consciousness in my reviews so i, I am repeating myself i'm sure but I, I think um, I wouldn't say it's a return to form, um, given that I'm not sure they've ever had a form to return to. Uh, they've, they've always been quite variable X transbots, but uh, this is definitely a, a step up from what I was um, used to with the, their last uh, release, their, their uh, lock. Uh, I'm hoping Virtus is more like this than uh, than lock. That's for sure, uh, especially given the delays on it. Um, and I would hope it would be slightly better than this as well, uh, to be honest, uh, given what I've paid for it. But uh, yeah, it's a nice looking bot. Um, it's it looks great on the shelf. Uh, the bot mode is obviously the, the the major selling point here for me. Um, I'm not all that bothered about a microscope um, or or a, 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 a janky looking tank. But it looks really good in bot mode. Um, definitely uh, can compete visually, um, aesthetically with fans toys. And the build, as I say, it is hefty. Um, it does feel like it's 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 a it's a weighty boy, um, although not necessarily sturdy. So uh, you know that's the thing. It's they put a lot of die cast in it, but there are still areas that I think that could be prone. Uh, potentially to some uh, breakage over time if you're not careful um, and again like little things not quite tabbing back together quite as well as they could um, it's just uh, it's just that old x-transport story isn't it but anyway should you get it uh, depends very much on your allegiances, I guess. I mean, we have a lot of partisan x transports and uh, fans toys, particularly fans toys uh, followers in the community um uh, they tend not to get on that well <laughs> uh me i'm i'm agnostic I, I will i will get whatever uh is 
in my mind, the best representation of a character for the money. And for me, that is this guy. Uh, I, I don't really care enough about Perceptor as a character to pay the Fans Toys um, premium. Um, there's always an uplift on Fans Toys figures. Uh, and in this case, I just, yeah, I don't care enough uh, to pay the extra money. This actually looks really great. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I would, I would wholeheartedly recommend this if you are interested in Perceptor as a character and you don't want to break the bank. Um, or if you missed out on Tesla V2. Um, so, yeah, happy to recommend it with the usual X Transports caveats. It's not a home run, um, but uh, it's not anywhere near the company's worst. Um, it is slightly off of their best. Um, anyway, that is actually the last uh, figure I have for a long time. I, I've zoomed through these reviews, got them all done in a day and a bit, uh, a couple of days maybe. Uh, so I won't have anything coming up for a while now because obviously we have Chinese New Year, which is, uh, as we all know, deprives us of our plastic crack for a good few weeks. Um, uh, the next thing I have coming up after this, uh, I believe, is going to be Fans Toys Outrider, which is their trailbreaker. Uh, I don't actually have anything else on order apart from that and Virtus. So I would hope both that and Virtus would drop after Chinese New Year, uh, fairly soon after. Um, yeah, looking forward to the future. I think maybe the uh, XTB Magnus will be coming up for me. Um, and then obviously way ahead, uh, looking way ahead to the end of the year, um, the X-Transports have baddened their Galvatron. Um, in between then, who knows? I'm sure there will be plenty of other releases to keep me going. Um, there will be probably a new masterpiece representation of Cliff Jumper at some point, be that the official or the fans toys or both. Um, and also uh, fans toys Jive and Phantom, which they're Jazz and Mirage. So still plenty of stuff coming up in the year. And I'm sure I'll pick up the odd, um, you know, outlying figure here or there. Um, because uh, even though I say to myself, my collection's pretty much finished, it never is. Because I'm always swapping stuff out and buying bits when I uh, need a little bit of retail therapy. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and watching this one again. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and found it uh, useful uh, to some degree or another. And... Yeah, that's probably it for me for a while now, unless I decide to do one of my other uh, sort of uh, collection updates. Oh, I need to do a follow-up to my Season 1 Autobots in the form of my Season 1 Decepticons, which I can now do, that I've got my Secret Trio complete. So maybe a few things to come between now and my next uh, figure review. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check, uh, check back on the channel. Until then, uh, it just remains for me to say thanks for watching and take care, and I will see you next time.